dog. project which is what we have today yes ma'am so thank you guys so much for being here with us we're super excited about this um courtney if those if people haven't seen you before tell us a little bit wait about give yourself. us one sec give us one sec okay we are looking into something Technical what's up guys there's copper all right we're good to go <laughs> can't go without work. copper i guess there we go Oh, I've been um, quilting for over 20 years, and if you can do something wrong, I've probably done it. So I've learned a lot. <laughs> That's awesome. Because <laughs> I think you can only learn by goofing up sometimes. So That's absolutely right. And you work um, on our events team, right? I Here do. Star. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, Best so, job ever. Yeah, I get to play all the fun <laughs> things we do. It's yeah. so great. Okay, well, so today, tell us a little bit about what we're going to do today. Today? We've got Shelly. That's the first time she'll Oh, yay! Hello, welcome. Shelly. That's great. That's right, awesome. You want to do some call outs real quick though? If you want to, I don't have to. We got I don't Maryland. Any... We got Bonnie from Maryland. We got Anne from the Netherlands. Yay. Oh, that's awesome. The Netherlands. Wait, am I on? Now you are. Okay, there we go. Now you guys can hear me. We, we're doing shout outs. Um, we got <laughs> Anne from Sweden. We got Arizona, New Mexico. Yay. That's awesome. Texas. Where's our East Coasters? Yeah. We got some Utah. Utah. They should be we got eating lunch Virginia. now. They ought to be watching. Right? Yeah. That's so exciting. Well, awesome. Fun. So we are going to uh, talk about the pre-cut fusible shapes, right? Yes, ma'am. From the whole country caboodle. So um, Courtney's going to show us some tips and tricks if you've never done this before, like I haven't. Um, so she's going to show us how it's done. All right. So when you get your um, pattern, the whole country caboodle on these, you will get all your shapes that are already pre-cut. Yay, nothing pre -cut. to cut. And pre-fused, And right? pre-fused. The fusible is already on the back. Hold up, we got to pause. Misty, I think your mic sh is off. What? You just check, nobody can hear you. Uh, We're on. checking. Is this on? Is your mic on? Hello, hello, hello. I can hear quite fine. She's on. Are you muted? Nope. It's I need to check things out. Hold on. What are you doing, the side cam? Did it get really loud? It did. Oh. Why is this blinking? I don't know. Well, that's weird. I'll lean really close to Courtney. Can you there hear me go. now? <laughs> <laughs> okay. We'll just stay close. I'm not sure what's going on okay. with my mic, but. Okay. So um, your pieces already come with the fusible web on the back. So all you need to do is peel that paper off and there's a layer of glue right there for you. Awesome. So that's really easy. So when we get ready to fuse all these pieces together, you need to think about what is closest to your background fabric and work from the bottom up. And those would be the pieces that we iron first. Now, instead of just going ironing right to the fabric, because sometimes um, if you were just to look at our little layout diagram, and you could start placing it on your background, but if you want to be more exact, you can use this nifty Teflon sheet. Okay. And what you do is you'll slip that Teflon sheet under here, and then we can iron right to this Teflon sheet and make this one huge pattern, let it cool, peel it back up, and then iron it to the fabric. So I'm going to show you how to do that. Okay, that sounds awesome. Since on here, I'm looking at our little dog here, 
and the the tongue and his little snout and his little eyebrows and his eyes to me that might be tricky placement wise okay so what we're gonna do is i'm gonna iron that little bunch of things first back up you keep working okay so i am going to lay that on there i've peeled the paper off of all these ahead of time so i'm gonna lay that on my sheet i'm gonna put these eyeballs down here Okay, and I'm just kind of holding on to it so I don't move it. And then we're gonna do the black eye part, which some of these are, this is under his little snout part a little bit. There we go. If I had fingernails, this would be a little easier. <laughs> There we go. He looks a little cross-eyed. That's how he looks in the picture. And then I'm going to go ahead and put the tongue under. So now I can fuse this one whole little piece. You can play with that eye a little bit and you can play with them until they look good. And now I'm going to fuse this right to this pressing sheet. The pressing sheet is on top of my pattern. Okay. If I have to keep my hand on the iron, I forgot it's not my <laughs> oh, one at all. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, and you want to let it cool. If you don't let this cool and you peel it off, you're going to leave some of the fusible web to the applique sheet, okay. which won't be good because then you won't have the fusible web to iron it onto your project. Right. So just sense. be careful. And sometimes I, I do this to make it go faster. Oh, it really is all there. It is all staying mm -hmm. together. Huh? Still a little warm, <laughs> and I'm full of hot air right below. It. <laughs> <laughs> Blowing on it will not help in this case. That's funny. Okay, so. Feels pretty good. I'm gonna put the glasses on so I can see what I'm doing. And then you can just peel this up. Wow. Makes it a little tricky with all the with all this um, pointy edges, but it's coming up just fine. And this will just keep it kind of together so when you go to add it where you can't see the pattern. Through, Correct. It'll... It's all in the right spot. Yeah, Your eyes are sense. where they need to be. The tongue is where they need to be. Okay. Up in the little tongue. Didn't stick, but he'll be all right. Perfect. All right. So then we're ready to do the dog. Okay. So it looks like this goes down, his body goes down first. So when you're reading this, how do you decipher kind of what order to put it in does it tell you exactly it doesn't give you any where these lines overlap the dash lines that means there's it's under something okay so you can kind of tell okay these eyes are underneath this part and then this ear is underneath the head and here where the dash line is that means it's under the ear okay. so we put the ear over that so your dash lines are kind of your guidelines, meaning that part is under something. And see where the tongue is, where these dash lines are, that means it's under the snout All part. Of that snout. Okay. Yeah. Okay, hold up. I just want to give an update. Mike should be good. We're paired up, so you hopefully you can hear everybody. <laughs> awesome. So now I'm looking at your questions. So now send in your questions if you have them, because I'm awesome. I'm waiting Thanks for them. Figuring that out, Jake. Thank you, Jake. And now this this little scarf part, this was kind of tricky for me on this. Yeah. This little back part just slips right under. There's a little. Oh, so it actually goes all it, the way around yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. So it looks like a real scarf there. And a lot of times I will place it before I glue. Right. And then that way I know I'm like, oh, no, I should have put whatever part ahead of whatever part or under or over where it shouldn't have been. I'm kind of. Let's see, and pull this scarf down a little bit. We have a question that's kind of off topic, but okay. I'm gonna ask it anyways. Is the, uh, they wanna know about the design wall, the gray design wall. Oh, that is, what is this called? K, K Fawcett, it's just design walls? Okay, K Fawcett design wall, and we sell that on our Missouri Star website. Um, it's like a flannel grid, so if you need so, yeah, a, we need literally a design took, wall. We took some like foam, let me aim. Let me aim you to it. Okay. Wait, one sec. Secondary but you one. we took some foam grid, like some foam insulation, and we just aimed. Uh, we just put the uh, foam, the fabric over the foam. Yeah. Can you see it here? So this is the grid that we're talking about. Has got a little quilt there, but. Yeah. Little, you've got mail quilt. 
But yeah, so they sell that in, in yardage and you just get it and stick it on there. It's pretty cool. Okay, so while while you were chatting about the foam, the um, flannel wall, I just went ahead and laid all my pieces down. Look at that. Now, since I can't see through the, this is um, a thick, almost it's a batting they used for yeah. the dog to give it some texture. texture. I just went ahead and I'm kind of, I'm looking at this and seeing how far up the tongue is, and I'm looking how close it is to the ear. I mean, it's not exact by any means. You can... I mean, if you want his tongue to hang out further, he can certainly do that, yeah, too. Yeah, give him a little personality. Yeah. Right? So Victoria's wondering if we carry this pattern. We do. So there's a link in the description to this pattern, as well as some other cute ones um, from the Whole Country Caboodle. We've got a couple other ones here with us, both a black and a, a yellow lab. Oh, but somebody's wondering if there's a cat. There are cats. There are there cats. cats. There are also, we also have lots of other really fun pre-cut fusible shapes. And so if you click the link in the post, you'll, it'll take you right to that on our website and you can check all of those out. And the cool thing is, is they come, those, the, does the pattern come with the cutouts? Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. So it's that's what, included. yeah, so you're, you're like it's ready to go. and ready mm -hmm. to go. So now I'm pretty happy with my shape, so I'm going to hit it with an iron. And do you have to hold it like... An extra amount of time with that thick batting? I'm holding it a little extra time. That batting is quite thick. Yes. Um, and I'm not sure how much of the... I'm just trying for right now to get the batting to stick to the fabric. Okay. Like the appliques. And then once we get to... Um, I'm going to tack it down a long time on our background. And then I'm going to flip it over and iron from the from back the side. Okay. Because that batting was giving us a little trouble. And it really takes a little bit to, for that heat to get through there. Yeah. So you are right with that. It's April's wondering if that's a golden doodle. It says I a, bet it is. It, it says, says doodle, doodle dog. dog. So I'm going with it's a golden doodle. Misty, this tell is a Jake, fun thing. Everyone and tell Jake I no. need a golden doodle. No. Misty wants one so bad. <laughs> I want I'm just one like, so bad. We, we, Our sweet dog died a few months ago, and so yeah. we don't have a dog. Misty so I needs need a, a dog. I need a dog. Everybody write in. He'll be we got to get Misty a dog. Yes. There we go. I need time. I need time, guys. <laughs> I know. Truly, my kids weren't ready for a dog yet, so that's part of why we've been waiting. The okay, so we're going to let this... Oh, that turned out so great. We're going to let him cool a little bit. All right. And then I'll show, while that's cooling, I'll show, here's the one that's already appliqued to the back. Now, what, we'll go over a little bit of the applique stitches here. Perfect. In a little bit, I'll show how to do that. And when they appliqued, they went ahead and put the batting behind it. Oh, great. Already. So they quilted it as they appliqued it, which you could certainly do. And then you could just quilt around it, put a back on it, bind it, and it's, and it's, and it's a top. Um, if you don't want to put batting back there that's no problem you just have to watch if there's whatever stitch you're using mm -hmm. if you try to use a stitch that's too dense like a satin stitch or a real tight zigzag this is going to pucker on you okay so you're going to want to put a tear away uh, stabilizer behind it that makes sense when you're sewing it and then you just tear it away when you're done so we had a great question about the iron. They're, they're wondering if you use, how hot is it and do you use steam? No steam. No steam but it is on high heat. So now we're going to peel him off. He's on there good. I did good ironing today. Yeah, Another question. Great. They're wondering if that Teflon comes with the kit. The Teflon it does doesn't. Not. You buy this separate. There's a couple of different options. This one is the, oops, the applique pressing sheet, right? Yes. That's the one we're using here. There's also a couple different um, options available out there that you can try that kind of offer the same thing. And the, these are also in the description if you're looking for one of those. Yeah, the Teflon sheets are in the description. Now we're ready to iron them to our background. One of the other things that I, um, seeing how thick that was, that didn't stick down to the back, and that's just fine. We'll get, we'll get him in place when we... Sure. And I'll tack, make sure I tack now. When I cut my background, if it says that, um, this says a, for an 8-inch block, this is ex highly exaggerated, but yes. I would at least cut it an inch or two bigger okay. because when you applique, the fabric tends to shrink a little bit. So you want to applique it, then I would cut it to the shape, to the size you want it. Okay. okay. So you have plenty of extra space there to square it up. Yes. So he's right in the middle. So now we're ready to iron again. Perfect. Copper was wondering how many different designs they have. Like, is, is there a hedgehog? Is there like some, she I said. Ooh, a hedgehog would be cute. The forest friends version where it's a hedgehog, oh, foxes. That would so Wouldn't that cute. be cute? Well, I think the funnest thing about it is it's kind of cut out. So initially it's like 
you know, you, you do a ton of, it looks like you do a ton of work, but it's pretty right. quick, right? Yeah, they've, they've really done all the hard work for you. And a lot of times it, they're great for when you don't want to put a lot of thought. It's like, I want to do something, but I don't feel like tracing all these parts. Just grab one of these kits and you can get a get right. it ready for you so it's kind of, it's very nice and it would that make way. a cute little throw pillow or wall hanging and that they want they want to see a close-up of the black lab oh okay this he's gonna be hard to see i think but it's kind of hard to see but we'll try it or i can you want to put no it i think he can he's get gonna it. go there yeah okay. is that good you need me to hold it up yeah don't it up like that yeah, a little more All right, see if that works. And then we might as well put the other one up there while we have the close up. For sure. So here's so that's the black oh. lab, that's the golden doodle. Hold on, I lost it. And here? Here's the yellow lab. Yellow lab. All right. But like we said, there's a whole bunch on the website that you can choose from. Ah, oh, so cute. So there he is and he's ready to applique. So as far as applique stitches, you want to make sure those edges are down. On this one, you can see here they did um, what's called a buttonhole applique stitch. Okay. On the machine that we're going to use, we're going to use a, um, a zigzag. You want it pretty close and long enough that you're going to hit the edge of the fabric. Plus, you want you want a decent sized chunk on your on the edge to hold it down. Okay. Okay. And there's no to me there's no real order on how how to do the stitching, you can just start. I usually start with the um, thread color that I have the most of. Okay. <laughs> and then change out near the end, or you can get it over with and do the smaller pieces first, and then um, do the larger sections last. You can match the thread, you can do um, contrasting thread, you could outline them all in black if you want it to look kind of folk art. It's sure. totally, thread color is totally up to you. Any thread is fine, you can use a 50 weight. Um, somebody, any uh, kind of thread's fine. Somebody just jumping in was wondering about the fusible on those pieces. Can you touch that? Yeah, um, for sure. So if you're just joining oh, wait, us. Oh, wait, I actually was muted. I'm sorry. Somebody oh. was asking about the fusible when on the uh, on the pieces. Yes, the fusible is already attached it's to already the pieces. It's already attached. So they're all pre-cut and pre-fused for you. And I think, from it, what I could tell, it seems like... This one might have, like, the thicker pieces might even have a, a heavier fusible. I think to that them. was just because the fabric felt really? thicker. Really? Is yeah. that all? Yep. Okay, it's all heat and bond light. It's they working great. Bond light. There we go. Courtney knows. <laughs> <laughs> so let's, um, I'll show you a little bit about um, the applique stitch. If you, we can go over to the machine. Yeah, that'd be Somebody's great. Somebody's actually just asking about that. They were saying, do you always have to do a zigzag or is there other options? You don't have to do a zigzag. You could use really any decorative stitch. I would try to stick though to a zigzag. You could do a satin stitch or the buttonhole applique stitch. I wouldn't go real fancy because you really want those edges to, to um, be tacked down very nicely. Right. So what we're doing here, I am leaving the tails long, and there is a reason for that. I'm going to show you the proper way to do it, and then I'll tell you how I cheat. How's that? <laughs> I love it. <laughs> you have to know the rules before you can That's break them. That's right. And I have done um, a few. I've done it either way. So Somebody's asking about stabilizer on the back of that before you start. Do you need this stabilizer? This one I don't really need stabilizer because this dog, because using the, it's floofy, floofy, it's yep. batting that they use for the dog part. Yes, yes, floofy. yeah. <laughs> That's the word of the day, floofy. I want everybody to use the word floofy. Today. I love it. So um, this one doesn't really need a stabilizer. Plus we're doing, um, the zigzag stitch we're doing isn't very tight. So I'm not worried about using a stabilizer with this one. If um, I believe the lab, yeah. the other two, it's regular fabric. Right. Um, I think it's either a, it's just 100% cotton or a batik. You would want to probably put a stabilizer under there. That makes sense. And so your first stitch when you start this, you want your needle to be on the outside of your applique piece. That's where the outermost point you want your stitch to hit. I'm going to slow down. Can I see this okay? Do we need to come in over the shoulder? If you have a needle up, up or a needle down on your machine, now's the time to use it. Okay. So now we're getting close to that point. So I don't, I'm going to start going down on my stitch length. I guess I can go a little bit bigger than that because you don't want that coming over the top. Then you don't want it going over the top oh, so of the point. Then we get to the point, I'm gonna zigzag up on that point and back. 
And then I'm going to turn it again and go back up that other side. So you want to kind of think about where your needle is stopping and making sure that we're on the outside of that. Now we can go back up to bigger now that we're coming down the big part. You're just changing the width there. I'm just ta changing the width of the stitch. And you can do it as you're sewing. See, I'm going to change this oh, as wow. we're sewing. And so you bring it down as you get to narrower parts. Yes. Okay. Yes. That's a great And you go tip. smaller. And you can use, um, at this point, I'm going to manually use my hand wheel because it's not stopping really where I want it to stop. So I'm going to make it stop where I want it. Then I'm going to go back on that point, and I'm going to come back up, and then I can go back up wider with my stitch. Wow. I would have never even thought to, to alter the, the stitch width. It's called thinking. living on the edge. I love it. <laughs> the other thing that works well with this, if you have an open toe foot, for your machine, use it because to me, it's I'm having a little hard time seeing where See? the end of my fabric is. But if you've got a foot that doesn't have anything there, um, and sometimes they're called an open toe applique foot, sure, um, use that. That's a good tip too, because this is clear on the front, but it is still you can't see right where your yeah. needle is. And when you are turning, when you need to turn it, put your needle on the outside of your applique piece. Move your piece. All right, Brenda, we're trying to zoom in as close as possible let us know if that's close enough we can move the camera behind you know we're on live so we can do whatever we want so let us know if you want an even closer view i think you should bring it up here and see it from her view i think it'd be helpful we'll bring it around maybe pause for a second let's do it let's do it just do it oh are we let us in yeah. Oh, I mean, well, we just did. <laughs> Do we have our Nike shoes on? Nope. <laughs> all right. Well, well and we've got points up there. I can keep some. Oh, okay. Oh, all right. This is going to be as close as you can get, ladies <laughs> and gents. There we go. Please don't look now, at my nails. How about I that shot? You know what I mean? Again, I'm trying to make sure that when the needle hits on the outside, it's on just on the outside of my applique. And now I'm up at the top of that crevice. I'm going to go ahead and do a stitch there. I mean, I don't and mean there's to... a little point, so I'm going to go down quite a bit on my stitch width here. I'm going to turn it so it hits again. And then I'm going to come up that other side. And now I can go bigger again. I don't want to go too big. Can you tell us what sizes you're adjusting between on this machine? Um, this machine, I am going um, between a 1.0 and a 2.0. A um, 1.0 length okay. is my length, and the 2.0, anywhere from a 2.0 to a um, down to like a 0.5 on those okay. skinny little points. Okay, I do have to mention this, though, because... And I can go up to a 2.5 here. Yes. I've been trying to convince Missy of this, but Copper says I need some Viking braids. Oh, don't <laughs> encourage him. <laughs> and now I'm up to a three. I'm just trying to get him to trim his beard. They're wondering if you could put this, iron it onto a t-shirt. Absolutely. Oh, absolutely. Make sure if you're going, make sure you pre-wash your t-shirt. Um, I'd be hesitant to do one of these pre-done ones on a t-shirt because this fabric probably hasn't been pre-washed. Oh. And even, so you could probably do it on your shirt that's not been pre-washed, but I, I'd i be so afraid of one shrinking at a different rate than the other. With the um, good, I mean, you, sure you, might could try better, it. you might have better luck with just the all cotton ones as opposed to this one yeah. that's mixed with the Yeah, with the batting. The batting. And so. Joy was asking for cats. We do have cats. We have cats. Are they linked in the description? In the the yeah. first link there is all the cutouts, right? Or all the... The second link is all the dogs. The first one is everything. Yeah, the first link is all of our pre-cut fusible shapes that we have on our website. So you'll see the cats in there and lots of other cute, fun things. The second link is all of these um, dogs that we're showing you today. And then there's also a link, I believe, for the pressing pressing sheet. Did we ever... Do we have edit... Do we have edit stuff? Hers is in the... So, yeah, so uh, yeah, Editor was out here a few 
what months ago yeah and she had some fun she had some cut fusibles too some fun fusible stuff yeah that was it's really cool and she's a good friend of the show huh yes she's the best now i'm down to that little stitch again so i'm coming up on a point And you just want to take your time. And then we're going to come back up on that point. So cute. And make sure you adjust your stitch width when your needle is in the background fabric. Because if not, if you're over here and you adjust that stitch width, you're going to go way off of your applique shape. Oh, so just make tip. sure you're... So I think some people, I think, didn't catch us right at the very beginning. And they're wondering, like, if you could just take one of the patterns and open it, kind sure. of show them what pieces are Absolutely. coming. Absolutely. Let's do that. All right. So we are working with these whole country caboodle. Um, we're making this doodle dog today. And so how these work is you open it up and you have this placement guide. And then you have all of these pre-cut shapes so they're already pre-fused and pre-cut out and then you just use the uh, applique sheet the teflon sheet that courtney showed us to lay it out and prep it for and there's is there's like instructions with the paper right yeah so there's yeah. a little layout there you just kind of follow that find the shapes yep kind of, really fun really cool idea it's really cool and Courtney's given us all the tips so that you don't have to worry. Because um, when I first saw it, I was a little nervous about all the layers. But um, Courtney showed us how to just not even worry about that. It's not even a thing. So if you it's missed it, remember, thing. you can go back and rewatch these anytime. So if you didn't catch the beginning, you can always go back and catch um, the full demo that Courtney's done the for us. Full, the full kit and caboodle. That's ah! right, the whole kit and caboodle. And Leanne, I'm killing myself, I'm on a roll. I have to say, Leanne from the whole country caboodle is so, so sweet. Oh, my hair's getting in it, sorry. But Leanne is super sweet. She does such cute stuff. She does a great job. She really does. When we get around this dog, I'm gonna show you how I end my thread and I'm almost there, so hang on with me. All right. All right, somebody has a question on like the needle for going through those layers for that. Um, okay. This is no problem with an 8012. Uh, my favorite machine needle personally is a Microtex um, Sharp 8012, and this would be just fine. Though if you want to use um, a heavier thread, say you want it to be really thick going around these little parts, um, you could use a 40 weight, like a quilting thread, and so you'd have to adjust your needle to that because you don't want... You wouldn't be able to fit that thread necessarily through the 8012. I'd probably go up to 9014 if you had a thicker. Okay, so we're almost at the end of this piece, and I don't want to go around the ear. So I am going to end it in the background. I'm not going to use the needle. There is not a needle cutter anyway, which yep. is good. Yep. So I'm going to pull this out, get those threads. Now, what, what you should do... <laughs> is um, we have, um, there's a product called self-threading needles and they have a break in the eye. Okay. And you can just thread the needle that way or you could use just a regular needle. Pull these threads to the back. Go, just pull them right to the back. You would tie it off with its mate and then I run the thread through a couple stitches and trim it off. Okay. Now that's the proper way. If you're doing just something quick like for a baby quilt or whatever, I just back stitch when I start my okay. zigzag or my, my decorative stitch. It's not a problem. And then you just trim your threads. And then just trim the threads like Perfect. normal. Yep. And then they're ready to go. And then this one. Yeah. Here's the all finished. Here's and I just all... love how all the stitching adds the dimension yes. that you need for the, the little dog. It make, brings them to life. It does. And this really, really helps bring this to life using that batting in there because this is really poofy. Right. Yeah. So it's then really you get fun. lots of shape. Yep. That's so fun. Yep. Well, thank That's you it. so much You're so for welcome. demoing that. You, you are bet. just so great. Um, and so are there any more questions before we wrap up? They're all excited about the hedgehog. Is they're like, there is a hedgehog. Perfect. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> I, I kept thinking, I bet Leanne made a hedgehog. So oh, cute. That's, and that's so great. They're also complimenting the great camo work. I mean, I don't mean to toot my own <laughs> horn or anything, but. You ask and you shall receive. So <laughs> that's right. Nice. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Courtney, for being here. Uh, right. Thank you to the whole country caboodle for letting us show these. And we will see you guys next week. See ya. Bye. Oh, wait. What? We gotta answer the questions real quick. Oh, perfect. What's I the quilt behind you? 
What's the ironing mat? Okay. What sewing machine are this we using? This is the Missouri Star Quilt. Jenny has a great tutorial for this. This is an Oliso Auto Lift Iron. We have it on a little silicone mat to protect our cutting mat, but we usually use this wool pressing mat uh, to iron. They're also asking if that, was that a zigzag stitch? It was a zigzag. Yes, that she, was the zigzag. Yep, just a regular zigzag. zigzag. And yep. this is an Eversone 25 that she was sewing on today. Mm -hmm. All right. Awesome. Awesome, guys. Thank you so See much. See you later. Bye.